Hello brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome back. We're going to do another long study. So I'm going to try to push through it because I want to go through every scripture with you brothers and sisters in Christ. <coughs> Pardon me. So we're going to get to this. I, I opened my regular book that I read in the mornings and the evenings, but I've been spending a lot of time. I did a video way back when I bought a uh, King James Bible where it's large print. So this is way bigger than this one. So I got used to the large lettering, so I sat down and looked at this, and I'm like, it's so small, <laughs> the, the lettering. So I got to get back to used to it. But this one's a lot easier with the flipping, because I put tabs on this one. Um, so I just thought that was a little funny, get a little laugh from the brethren too. It's just when you start looking at large lettering and you go to small lettering, it's kind of hard. So if you want to turn to Acts 22.6. Three manifestations of the glory of God. Okay. Question you got to ask yourself: Did you know that the glory of God is something you can see? And we're going to find that out in this study. So, the three manifestations of the glory of God. The first manifestation we're going to hit real quick. Not real quick. We're going to go through it. Is light. So many people say light's always moving. I understand that, but you'll see a brightness. It allows you to see things. But light is the first manifestation. So we're going to hit up Jesus is the light. First part. So Acts 22, 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh into Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. This is Paul. First, it's Saul before he became Paul. And he's going and hunting down Christians, and he's on the road to Damascus, and who does he see? And I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go to Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed to, for thee to do. I keep forgetting to look. Okay, it's eleven. And when I could not see for the glory of that light... Being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. One thing I left out is, is I watched JT's video on the glory of the Lord. I think it's the title. I'll put the link in the uh, description. And that's what gave me the idea for this. He did a great study going through the glory of the Lord. I think it's the glory of the Lord. Where he goes back in the Old Testament and shows how there's Jesus being mentioned in the Old Testament left and right. I might have the title wrong, but I'll put it down in the message. But he starts going through and showing a lot of amazing things. And I got in there and said, well, what about this? What about that? And it just had a lot of questions. So that's why we're going into this. So Jesus, God's glory shines through Jesus. Okay. We see that here. Now, there's another thing to see is that the people that were with him saw the light, but they were uh, afraid. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4.6. Go over to 2 Corinthians 4.6. I always do that. I'm in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. We see there, there's the light again. It's in the face of Jesus Christ. But it says here, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the light. And we're going to get to them. Or actually, we're already on this. Uh, where Jesus says he's the light. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When we get saved, we have who in us? Jesus Christ. 
Who's the light of the world? Jesus Christ. Another thing I want to point out is Revelation. Turn to Revelation. 21.31 This is also a big one on Jesus being the light. 21 and 23. Chapter 21, verse 23. This is talking about the new heaven and the new earth. Okay. After the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Jesus is the light. There is no sun, there is no moon. He lights everything. There's no night anymore. So, Jesus is the light. Now let's talk about salvation, because Jesus is the light of the world. So, one of the manifestations that we see here of God's glory is through Jesus Christ. It's through light. Okay. Uh, John 3.16, salvation. Turn to John 3.16. I think people know where I'm going with this one. People like to read John 3.16 and 17, but they need to learn to keep going. <laughs> A lot of people need to learn to keep going. Uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he, that he gave His only begotten Son. Not His only Son, only begotten Son. If you're using a Bible perversion, we're King James Bible believers here. Get rid of your Bible perversions, Catholic Bibles, and get a King James Bible. The whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Why do we read all that? So we can get the context to know it's talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 19, And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. As we do this study, brothers and sisters, we're going to realize that God's glory is everywhere. Right? And people don't like the light shining on the darkness, on their sin. Okay, Sin can't be in God's presence. Uh, all sin is negative, and it's going to lead you to hell. And we're going to talk about hell. Um, there's three manifestations of the glory of God. But right here we see Jesus being referred to as the light again. Okay. And even though it didn't say glory, but we're reading about how the, the glory of God shines through Jesus because he's the light of the world. Because okay. we'll see, see light in the, Matthew 5.14. What about us? Okay. Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reading to 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. For us... The reason I read that for us, when you get saved, who do you have in you? Jesus Christ. Christ. I'm trying to swallow, but see, uh, Jesus Christ. Okay? The world's supposed to see that. The life you live, the changed life, uh, your beliefs, your stands, they're supposed to see that light in you. Okay? The Bible says you're supposed to be separate from the world. 
We're in the world, but we're not of the world. The Bible says we're not to conform to the world. We're not a friend of the world. We're not to love the world, uh, the way of the world. You know, the love, love not the world, neither the things in the world. Okay? The way of the world is sin. We're supposed to be separate, and there's supposed to be something different about us. We're supposed to have a light in us that shines that the world can see. And what's that light? Jesus Christ. You say, well, no, we have the Holy Spirit in you. I can go back into that study, but this is talking about the manifestation of the glory of God. But you have Jesus in you. Jesus said, I will be with you. Then he says, the Holy Spirit's going to be with you. And then there's a verse somewhere that says, I think, God in you. So I just don't want to get into the Godhead thing, but you have Jesus Christ in you and he's shining to the world. Remember that you're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen. Unto good works. So there we see the light that's in us is Jesus Christ. So the glory that's in Jesus is in us, and the world should see it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Jesus in us. We are to be a light in, the dark, in this dark world. There's supposed to be a distinction between us and the lost world. As I said, we're not to conform to this world. Um, the lost world is the enemy. But hear me out. The Bible says, it teaches that the lost world is the enemy, and we love them by preaching the light to them and being a light to them. It's not just preaching the gospel. A lot of people get into it where true love for the lost world is preaching the gospel, and it is 100% truth. Now understand that how we live our life is a light also because people come up to you and want to know what's different about that person. There's something different about that person from everybody else I've come across. That person has something I want. My life is just a mess. What does he have that I don't have? The light. Okay. Second Corinthians 4 4. Let's go to Second Corinthians 4 4. Not first Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians. Let's see. Let's go to 3. I was trying to decide whether to do 3 or 4. Let's do 3 also. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay. When we preach the gospel to people, brothers and sisters in Christ, especially professing Christians, and they just reject it and they can't get it, I just don't get it, it's works or this, or that. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them, they're lost. And who has blinded their eyes? Satan, lowercase g God of this world. So the glorious glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine, shine light unto them. Mm -hmm. We're to be a light for the world, but there's some people that just want darkness. That's all they want. They don't want the light. Yeah. They like living their fantasy Christian world, is basically way to say it, their fantasy world of, you know, I can play Christian, but I don't really want the light. I don't want to change life. I don't want to repent. Okay. But once again, we see the shine, the light. Okay. The other thing, too, when we read in this verse here about the God's world blind the minds of them that believe not, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them or lost. Remember when we read in Acts 22 about Paul, that when everybody else saw the light, they were afraid. Okay. Uh, some people who love their um, sin, they love the darkness, they're afraid of the light. And you'll get that reaction from people sometimes. They just see you and go, I, well, I had like, I said, I had one guy that was joking around with me on the beach once and he told a dirty joke and thought it was funny. Ha 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 ha. And I'm like, well, sir, can I give you one of these? And I pulled out a gospel track to hand it to him. And he just like, oh, oh, well, are you? And his, he started cleaning up how he's talking and everything. And he took, and he said, oh yeah, I'll take it. And he kind of cut the conversation off and walked away. Okay, you're going to get that reaction from people. Okay? When you have the light in you, they're, they love the darkness, and they're blinded by the lowercase g God of this world, who told them you can have the world. 
fed them all these lies, you can have the world. It's not a big deal. So, first manifestation of the glory of God is light, Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, the second manifestation, we're going to get into this, fire. Second manifestation of the glory of God is fire. And you can get light from fire, I understand that. But turn to Exodus 24, 17, Old Testament. Ugh. Whoa, opened right to it. Exodus 24, 17, thank you, Lord. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of, e of Israel. Okay. I know it says like def devouring fire on the top of the mountain. That's what it looked like. Like I said, can you see the glory of, of the Lord? It's like devouring fire. So is that all we've got? Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 5.24 Flip over to Deuteronomy 5.24. And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory as his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. They're seeing the fire, and they see the glory of the Lord. And a voice coming from the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man and he liveth. Can the glory of God be manifested in fire? I'm not talking about fire that we do. I'm just talking about in likeness of fire. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one of the biggest things that I was just saying, from this point, we're going to say some things that I can't prove 100% from Scripture. What you're your studies have shown you was the Holy Spirit in you bearing witness with my Holy Spirit talk in the comment section what you think based off scripture if I miss something but one of the big things I was thinking when I was doing this study was what about our works okay uh, 1 Corinthians 3 11 what about our works what happens to our works when we go to the judgment seat of Christ 1 Corinthians 3.11 And we're going to go down to 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire okay. so what I'm talking about here is um, 1 Corinthians 10 34 or sorry 10 31 our works are getting put, tried by the fire. Could this be God's glory? Hear me out. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Go over to 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. What if the works that are going on there Remember, if you can't give God glory in it, could that be the wood, hay, and stubble? Because it's not talking about sin. Okay, God's going to wash our sins away. I understand that. But when we do works today, could there be works? It says here we're supposed to give God glory in all things. Do all to the glory of God. Okay? Could that fire be God's glory? And if what you did glorified God, it gets saved. If what you did didn't glorify God, it gets burnt up. Like I said, I can't be 100% on this, but when I was doing this study, the glory of the Lord can present itself as a fire. Okay. And we're going to see this when we get to the next part. Um, the next thing to talk about, like I said, just talk in the comment sections what you think 
according to scripture. Like I said, I just started doing this and thinking, what if that's the case? Because God commands us to give him glory in everything that we do. So if we're doing something that doesn't give God glory in, it's going to come as wood, hay, and stubble. Could it come as wood? Is that talking about the wood, hay, and stubble? I mean, think about it. When you sin, you can't glorify God. When you fall into doing things you're not supposed to do, it doesn't glorify God. Things that might seem not sinful, but you look at it and you can't glorify God in it, is that wooden hay? Is that going to end up as wood, hay, and stubble? I believe it will. Okay. So next one, hail. I told you we get to this. Hell, not hail. Like, not hail like <laughs> the ice that comes down. Hell, H E L L. Matthew three eleven. Sometimes I kind of slur my words a little bit. Uh, praise the Lord, it's not as bad as it could have been with my seizure disorder, as bad as it was in the past. And uh, Matthew 3.11. Let's get to Matthew 3.11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John the Baptist. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff in unquenchable fire. Okay, the baptism is talking about is two baptism heaven, hell. Saved sinner, someone who dies in their sin, they go to hell. That's the fire it's talking about there. Now, part of me. We're going to go through some other verses. You don't have to turn there, but Luke 3.16 is uh, kind of the same story. It's the same story it was told by a different person. Luke 3.16, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Uh, Matthew twenty five forty one. But like I said, just think about it. God's glory is everywhere. And what if, even though it's dark, I understand, like I said, I can't be 100% on this. Like, just this is absolute truth. I understand it's dark in hell because the flame, there's no light. I understand that. But could the glory of God be burning people that they die in their sins? Okay. Baptism with unquenchable fire. Like I said, it's kind of this one's kind of a little shaky because, like I said, there's no light, and I know sin can't be in God's presence. But as long as God is alive, you know the person they've wronged, you burn for that long, and since God is forever, they're going to be burning in hell forever for all eternity. Okay. So I went into that. Let's go to Matthew twenty-five forty-one real quick. Matthew twenty-five forty-one. Twenty-five, forty-one. One more page. Then, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire. It says it was prepared for the devil and his angels. So, you know, I just wanted to throw it in here because it was an idea. You know, everything I do the study on, I wanted to throw things in here. It's kind of, I don't know, like I said, that one's a little, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. So I'm going to probably lean more towards maybe not. But I just thought, you know, burning, the glory of God can reveal itself as fire. Could there be a relationship to the burning in hell and God's glory? Sin can't be in his presence, so you burn. But it's prepared for the devil and his angels. It was prepared beforehand. So... Um, so I'm going to lean more towards the no, but I wanted to put it in here because I want to share everything that I was doing, going through in my Bible study with you. So if you think something about that that I missed, throw it in the comment section. Okay? So we see that the glory of God can be manifest as the light, Jesus Christ, and through fire, okay, 
The third way that the this was the main point of the study, because like I said, everything here, I'm throwing stuff your way to think about. Maybe do some study on your own to get it even more detail. But this was the main part why I did the study. The third part that the glory of God can manifest itself as is a cloud. There's a lot to this one. Okay. Exodus 16, 6. Go back to the Old Testament. Okay. Exodus 16, 6. And we're going to read down to 10. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at evening, Then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord, and what are we that ye murmur against us? They're going to see the glory of the Lord. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to be full to the full, for the Lord, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. How many times have you had that with people? It's a little bit of a side note, brother and sister Christ. You go to correct him with the scripture, uh, whether you're correcting their sin, they have a little bit of the belief is wrong, or they're twisting scripture or misusing the scripture, and they get mad at you, and they start attacking you. And what they're really doing is they have a problem with this, not you. Okay. Especially when you preach the gospel, the true gospel. And Moses spake unto Aaron, say, say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmuring. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness, and beheld the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Okay. They say, well, it's in the cloud. But they saw the cloud. It said up here, it said they would see the glory. They'd see the glory. Now they're saying it appeared in the cloud. Okay. So can the glory of the Lord appear in a cloud? According to the word of God, it can. What about Jesus on earth in the likeness of sinful flesh? Let's talk about Jesus again. My favorite subject. Mark 9, 2. Not Matthew. It starts with an M. Mark. I was like, it doesn't line up. Nine, nine, two. We're going to go all the way down to eight. So Mark nine, verse two. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. Shining. What we talked about earlier about the light, Jesus is the light. Yeah. I believe that's the glory of, glory of God shining through him. So as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto him Elias and Moses. We'll get to these two later, in, later on in the study. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make the tamp three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wished not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. Now you say, well, it doesn't say glory, but we know the glory of God could be manifest in the cloud. We saw that Jesus was shining. Now from this... Uh, but there's another telling of this story. Turn to Luke 9, 28. That's why you have two tellings of it. Sometimes you can get a little bit more information from some, well, uh, another person telling the story. 
Luke 9, 28, and we're going to go down to 35. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering, shining. And, behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory, and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. Jesus Christ, the glory. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Okay. We got the glory of Jesus and we have a cloud. Okay. Is there a correlation to the glory of God? He speaks out of a cloud. We saw in the Old Testament, he spoke, spoke to him out of the cloud. Okay. The glory of God. So this is an incident where you have a cloud and that's part of this, the glory of God. Now it came after, when you read it, uh, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. When you read it in Mark 9, it just says there was a cloud there that overshadowed them. It didn't say a cloud came all of a sudden. There was already a cloud there that overshadowed them. Okay. When you read Luke, Luke 9... This one says, why he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. So the first one says, it's like it's there. The second one says, it came as, there came a cloud. So, um, the glory of the Lord can be shown in a cloud. Now this is important because we're going to talk about uh, Moses and Elisha. It's Elias. It's translation from Greek to English is Elias, Hebrew to English is Elijah. It's talking about Elisha. Elisha. I'm hoping I'm getting the right one. Um, Acts 1 9. If you want to turn to Acts 1 9. This cloud's there, okay. Stop there. We look at Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And when he had the, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Okay. Could that be the glory of the Lord taking Jesus Christ up? Manifesting where we can see it as a cloud. Something to think about. Okay. Uh, the ca now we're going to get to the catching away of the body of Christ. This is something I've heard people say. Oh, I don't think, doesn't mean necessarily mean there's going to be a cloud everywhere. If this is the cloud, it's talking about the Lord, glory of the Lord. It took Jesus up. He comes back in the cloud. We'll get to that. Um, do you really think there's not going to be a cloud in the sky when we get called up? When Jesus is there? Uh, what did uh, Paul see in the sky? The light, Jesus Christ. Um, what do they say? 1 Thessalonians 4.16. That's kind of talking to you more than telling you to turn um, there it is okay first Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm starting to lean towards that we will see a cloud. We'll see the glory of the Lord, and he's going to say, Philip Newton, come up hither. People say, oh, there's going to be, there's going to be, the whole earth is just going to be a cloud. Uh, there's not that many of us left, brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay. And it's a manifestation of God's glory. Can a cloud appear above every, the few Christians that are left on this earth? That's not, is anything too hard for the Lord? I'm leaning towards believing that there will be a cloud in the sky. Okay. But it's not just a normal cloud. I believe it's going to be the glory of God, Jesus Christ up there in His glory. And He's going to call us home. Okay. So the catching away of the body of Christ, I believe that there is going to be a cloud. Um, if you disagree, you know, show me in Scripture. It does say right there we're going to be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we're learning that the glory of the Lord can manifest itself as a cloud. Light, fire, and clouds. Um, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's go to where it mentioned clouds again. The second coming, uh, Matthew 26, verse 64. Matthew 26, 64. Oops, I kept going. That's 27, not 26. A lot of verses in this chapter. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay. Um, there we see the clouds. Uh, Mark 13, 20, uh, 26, Jesus says it again. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. Uh, Mark fourteen sixty two says it again, um, and Jesus said, "I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven." Turn to Luke twenty one. So the second coming of Jesus Christ, he comes in a cloud. We're going to get to Revelation here eventually. But one more verse before we do that. Luke 21. Mm-hmm. 21 verse 26. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the power of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory there's the cloud and here we we actually hear about glory again his glory god's glory so i've read that first one man's heart failing him for fear why glory of god it's god coming down, Jesus Christ, and His glory's there. Could that be what, remember we saw about Paul, we read about Paul, the people saw the light and were sore afraid. These people are seeing the glory of God coming down and men's hearts are failing them for fear. Is there a correlation between the two? I believe there is. I believe when you're lost, that the glory of the Lord is a fearful thing. Remember the light? Jesus is the light, and men love darkness rather than light. Um, Revelation 1 7. Let's go to Revelation. It took me a while to start saying Revelation, and I kept adding an S to it and got corrected by a brother in Christ. Revelation 1 
verse 7. No, I'm in seven. I was like, I must have wrote it down, Ron. But once again, please forgive me, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm in the wrong spot. Revelation 1, 7. I said it right, but I was in the wrong spot. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. He's coming in the clouds. Remember what we just read over there? Hearts failing them for fear. Okay. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Jesus come back in the cloud, and we saw about the glory over in the other. Okay. Uh, Revelation 14. Go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14, 14. And we're going to go all the way down to 20. And I look, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power o over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in the sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred forloins. Jesus coming back. Uh, there was a cloud. So... Um, the whole point of that is, is there a cloud in relation to going up and coming down? Yes. So I believe, brothers and sisters of Christ, when I hear my name called, Philip Newton, come up hither, I'm going to see a cloud, and I'm going to see Jesus and his glory in that cloud. I believe that doing this study. So if you're so hardcore against there's not going to be a cloud whatsoever, show me why in Scripture. Okay. But I saw that, and I was like, that's pretty neat. So now what we're going to get into real quick is two big things that uh, people are going to probably fight me on. I can't be 100% on this, but like I said, with this study, looking into the glory of the Lord and how it manifests itself, it makes you look at some things in the Bible a little differently. Okay? So let's talk about the two witnesses again. Hebrews 12.1 Hebrews 12.1 Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews is written to the Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble, and it uses the term cloud of witnesses, plural. Now, if you turn to Revelation 11.3, Revelation 11. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. This time I actually said it wrong. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. It still says it plural. Two or more can be S's. It doesn't mean tons. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So we see in Hebrews it's talking about... Um, 
compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You have Moses and Elisha, Elijah, um, uh, performing all these miracles and everything, trying to prove to him that, and preaching Jesus Christ to him. Okay. But go back to what we talked about when Jesus was on the earth and they came, there was a cloud involved. Then this says cloud of witnesses, and then you come over here and you read about the two witnesses. And then you go back and you think, well, Jesus was there. And people will say that it can't be Moses. Elijah represents the prophets. Moses represents the law. It can't be Moses because he died. Elijah went up and he didn't die. So he can come back. But if you think about it, Moses and Elijah both came back already once when they were ministering to Jesus Christ. And um, Paul, I'll go back. Was it Peter, John, and James saw them? And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. And Elias. So could this be a tie-in proving that the two witnesses is Moses and Elijah? Okay. Just something for you guys to think about. The next thing that I was doing in this study, I was looking, was the Holy Spirit descending like as a dove. Matthew 3.16. Let's look at Matthew 3.16. We get this a lot uh, with the Godhead part. Well, they saw the, the, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, so you can see a spirit. Let's get to this. Holy, uh, Matthew 3.16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water... And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and lightning upon and lighting upon him. Okay. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It came down and lighted upon him. And it says, like a dove. It didn't say it was a dove. Okay. We're going to read the other passage too. Uh, Luke 3.22. Let's go to Luke 3.22. Oh, let's do 21. Start at 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens was opened. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and in thee I am well pleased. Now, what's the color of a dove? Gray and white. And if you look how a dove lands and it's moving, we just read about how a cloud is involved when something's going up and something's coming down. What if the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit was in a cloud that looked like a dove as far as the movement as it comes down? You weren't really seeing the Holy Spirit. You are seeing the glory of God around the Holy Spirit bringing it down on Jesus. The Old Testament for them to believe in God, remember, their signs are for the Jewish people. They saw the glory of God in the cloud. To show that you're not attacking us, we read all about that. Now, can I be 100% about this? But looking into it, I was like, what if that's the case? Because you can't see a spirit. You can't see a soul. You can see a body. You can see Jesus Christ. So what if what's going on here is the glory of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is in the glory of the Lord, and that's what they're seeing come down and light on Jesus Christ. Okay. Something to think about, brothers and sisters of Christ. Something to think about. Just something to think about. So I did this study and was like, this is something neat to throw out there. Talking about the three manifestations of the glory of God. And to get some of your input and show you some things that God has shown me. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you. I want to thank the brethren for their prayers. Um, I finally got my first letter in my P.O. box. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister in Christ. Um, so, like I said, at some of these videos, I was going to mention at the end that 
I have a P.O. box. If you want to, I'd like to get some letters. I, I really enjoyed reading that sister's letter out on the deck with the, in the evenings when the sun's going down. It's a blessing. I get to talk to the Lord about the letter and everything. So I'm really looking forward to letters from the brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you want, I understand emails better. I understand that. But sometimes the old paths are better. Okay, sometimes I've printed out emails and I've gone out there and sat there and talked with the Lord as I read them and everything. I can do that too. I understand that. But it'd be neat to get stuff from the brothers and sisters in Christ. So, so that being said, I'll put the P.O. box down at the, uh, uh, I'll put it at the bottom of this video and in the comment section. So I've got two things to link. JT's video and the P.O. box. Kind of reminding myself. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please, please keep me in your prayers, brothers and sisters of Christ. Uh, my eyes are doing good. Sometimes they're not. And I'm always keeping you, brothers and sisters, in, in my prayer right? uh, when I pray. So, I'll see you in the next video.